Jo, oh, fantastisk. Fantastisk då är vi på luft då. Fantastisk when we are on the air and thank you that you remind me we are on English and you are now on the new live in online Bible school. Um, and I'm, you are so welcome. I'm happy to see you again if I cannot see you, but I hope you will be happy still. Uh, and I know you are there in the spirit and follow me because we have, we, I will still continue preaching this time about uh, pastors and the shepherd, uh, uh, about some of this um, uh, skills and um, this anointing that, uh, and this things that, and work that is on the pastor's heart. And it's natural that he is a part of uh, and he want to be... Uh, but before that, we will start to um, pray so the um, presence of the Lord will be here with us. Hallelujah. I'm thanking you, Father in heaven. I'm thanking you so much that you are here, that you are my creator. I'm thanking you that you have blessed me with the wisdom and knowledge. I'm thanking you that today the knowledge and the preaching of your word be lifting us up in our spirit and then will uh, help us to walk the straight road that you will not let us fall out and that we will growing to be more like you i'm thanking you and uh, i'm praising you and i'm thanking you for all of my friends who are looking um, and they will be blessed so much uh, overwhelming blessing to everyone abroad everyone who listening and uh, all the blessing in jesus name and let the holy spirit just be there and we give new fire in your life in jesus name amen, amen. what i was telling starting to telling before uh, we are um, uh, i will today mainly focus on um i don't know if they have a different name on it but um I'm using the about like soul, soul caring, how to talk with people who have the um, confession, who walk with people, uh, what it is, and we will have reading a lot simple things in the Bible. So you will learn more today about how to have personal conversation. You know, in the Catholic, they have um, a kind of uh, confession that is really different. And this is not anything we are doing. But um, Hans Nielsen Hauge, he, um, in the Protestant, we have a different uh, way of seeing it. Now we are not like only, go this is not the way I will talk today, but it's much better because at least you have a confession that you are talking with your things, with a priest or a pastor or someone who is uh, like a father for you or a mentor for you, then you can release um, but that guy can never forgive you. He uh, just like, you can confess to him. Because I believe on confession is one of the key in the spiritual realm. Because when you confess something, it will be f you will be free. And when you confess to a friend or somebody, it will really help you. And, but forgiveness and uh, the, the conversation is just like a help together to be two people to talk with the Lord. It's not uh, that person cannot redeem you or do anything more like that. He is the one just listening and, and guiding you. So, so I believe really on that kind of confession. Um, and one of the things with these things is that you have duty of the confidentiality. I don't know if I can say that word correctly, but when you talk to someone, then it's a private conversation. It's only between you and the person you talk to, nobody else. And of course you can ask if you can tell something from the story, if they, it's a good story that you can use, maybe you don't use the name, but you need to ask. And um, because if you are not, if you're not keeping this between you and that person and God, then you are losing your trust and you cannot do, be trustworthy to be, have conversation with other people. 
like I'm calling this, most of this uh, teaching today, it's uh, around about spiritual care. Um, but in real, you can call it sometimes like a coaching. Because, um, and because you're helping people to be there for them. They need to do it. We have a really funny jokes in Norway, like we have a coach for you training in the gym and you pay him and he will, and then for training with you every day, but and then he train every day, but you are not there. <laughs> but you are, you are not getting strong. He, he will be strong, but not you, because he is the one who training. That's not the kind of coaching we are talking about. But coaching is that you are the one who need to do it. And uh, the one you're talking to, the people you're helping is the one who will grow. You help. You are just like there for <coughs> listening to them. But you can call it like that. Um, indicative conversation. It's about like to have care about like the soul, what is uh, they have losing the way of thinking. They have lost the way uh, of the hope in their life. They have they see darkness, they are frustrating, they have problem in depression, or maybe they have thing they need to be free. Sometimes our we are like a faith movement church, a Pentecost church. So we are really like believing that Jesus will set free, and that is true. But sometimes we need to accept that there is someone who need to have a walk. They don't want to be free. They need to have a walk. They need to, to grow. It's something that had pain, something had been there in their past or something. Or, or um, it's also to build the character, to, to, to um, uh, walk uh, with the grace that God wants to uh, guide them into the next level in their life. That's why. Um, so in real, it, you can normally, when you are going to Wikipedia like these things, you, you see it's normally like um, professional people to take education on um, um, and university like that. And it's a lot of the same like uh, psychological help, but it's not like that always because it's also between the you are a disciple so you need to train you need to learn these things because it's for everyone to help other people so it's not like you have a special education but of course someone have and someone can help other people more than this is why we have more mentoring it's and it's always good but so, in real, what I, I will use the Bible today too. So it's not like, um, like it only for um, the world teaching. It's not about that at all. It's not a world teaching. And like, if you are a priest or like this thing, it should still be grounded in the Bible. How Jesus lived. How we are thinking about these things. Uh, in the Wikipedia, in, if you uh, search it, it's saying normally this is uh, to walk a part of the life with someone, um, concrete people, to helping them to get hope, to get them to get new faiths, and to make the love. That is in real what this is to have spiritual care, to help people to grow up, to, to, um, to grow to, in the spiritual and the soul, to, to uh, make them to understand sometimes the difference between who to be a Christian and to help them out from the mentor. Open their eyes because, um, and, and sometimes it's always, it's you, everyone that you meet. You can never force anyone to see what you see. You can just walk with them and being there as, um, I find a really nice um, um, chapter in um, Second Corinthians. Um, I just remember it when I was sitting today and in um, Second Corinthians uh, chapter two, verse fourteen. They say, 
Paulus say this thing, it's really nice. But thanks be to God, who always lead us as captive in Christ's triumphal procession, and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Him everywhere. Why I, I like this Bible was, it's like, when we are a part of Christ, we are first of all smelling the aroma. We are like, a, uh, it's not always what we are talking and how we are like a, a really good speaker. Maybe in one time I will be a really good speaker. But, that, but, <laughs> but the point is, what you see most is your attitude, your aroma, your active, what you're prioritizing. If you love somebody, you can see it. It's not, you don't need to always tell it. If you want the best for other people, people will see it. Because if you only focus on yourself, then we'll see that too. So these things, it's like the most important thing is to be there, to smell it, to let's see your aroma. Uh, I don't want to say so much, but you, see, you remember like David, he, he, before he was a king and then Saul was a king, he, there was a lot of like people who have uh, doubt with financial, there was like in real life, you're imprisoned, everything was down, there was broken. And he'd take them in as his best friends. He, he, he'd bring them in in army and servant for him because they were faithful. They, they don't have anything else in their life. And they grow up. He, they were trustful. They get qualified because they was with him. And then he was, they was the, like a superpower man. They was winning. They was trustful. They was uh, helping. And some of them was like fighting many hundred and kill many hundred because they were so loyal. Loyalty and trustworthy is so important. Um, hallelujah. Um, I just want to start a little bit like <laughs> go more deeper, but um, seeing this man, but it's not always uh, this is to everyone, but it's not always how you start your life. But it's how you're ending up. In First Timothy 4, 7, it's like it, it's talking about like to finish your race. Because how it's, they saying in the, they have a like good saying like, every sinner um, have a good, can be a biscop. Like, but uh, and uh, like all have a past. All, all the pastor, all the Christians have a part. So you need to start war, one place. It's okay. We can do wrong, but we are doing less wrong every day. We are doing. We learning because if you don't learn, then we have missed something. Then we really need some coaching. We really need someone who is there for spirit care for us. So the big question is always like, where are we going? Where are we want to be? As a, yeah, we are maybe complaining. Oh, my burden for my life when I born, my parents was alcoholic. Yes, I was born in this place. I was poor. I was in drugs. I had this past. I cannot be anything, right? I understand that because sometimes... Um, or, or my father misused me, or like this thing. I can never move on. But I believe you, you are the one that can cut that curse to, to start new and be blessed, just overwhelming more. I have one, uh, we will talk more about like this people. One of the disciples of Jesus, his name was Judas. Everyone know him. He prayed him, and he sold him for 30 silver coin. He had just been uh, this holy week now. So I will talk more about that. But just Judas, he was like, he's sitting there eating the communion, the Lord's dinner, the last dinner with Jesus. Jesus washed his feet. And you know, Jesus is calling his friend. He still know what he will do. He still know he was the only, that is the one who will, is the reason that he will suffering 
so really bad. This is how Jesus is. This is how we should be. He, <laughs> you know, we are, why is I'm telling this thing? Yes, because I met so many people. I think I will met more of this too. But there are so many people who say, this church, oh, I have big problem. And then they go to the next church. I have so problem. And then now this leadership here is crawful. They are manipulating. Oh, these people is, here can I not stay? You know Judas? <laughs> he had the best pastor in the world. <laughs> he can never complain. He had the best leadership in Jesus. He had the best advisor, therapist. He had the best friend that was with him. Still he failed. Why I'm telling this thing? Yes, because, first of all, it's you and me who is responsible to learn to, to be like Jesus, to, to uh, walk with him, to, to uh, have fellowship with him. You know that uh, in Norway we have like three B. I don't know when English will be different. But first of all is to pray. Praying is so important. We have conversation with the Father. And then he will tell us things. He will protect us. And with our fellowship, how we can talk with somebody, how you can learn somebody to know if you're not talking to them. Second thing is the Bible. We really need to be like um, every day just digging. The Bible is our food every day because if we don't get the Word of God in our life, we will be like uh, dry up. It's like you will go without food. You will be really hungry and you will be... Um, dying in real, spiritual. You really need to learn to, and to le read and to be hungry, to understand the Bible, to understand the Word of God. The Word of God is Jesus Christ Himself. And, and the, the Holy Spirit will make it alive. And then you have the third part, that the B, that is to the Lord's dinner, the communion, to sharing that with the friends, the church. It's so important. It's so, so many secrets in, the, in it. I have another teaching maybe about that in the future, but in real I have like, I don't know how many points. There is so many uh, in the Bible that um, um, telling that if we are not a part of Jesus, if we are not prophesying, if we are not sharing his body and his blood, we have not part of him. So it's so important to, to, uh, to with the communion. And then we have the last thing is the brothership. If you have the brothership, if you're doing this, to, of course, together with the communion, then, then you are happy together. You're sharing the food. You're sharing the, the sorrow. The, 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 and you, of course, you will making happiness because when we are happy, we will be strong. Um, because the one who is happy, he have no worries, and then uh, we will have he be strong. You will help each other. You will care about each other. You will fin uh, sharing the food together. That is the brothership, and you 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 can sharing what is worrying, and then you helping it, and then you say this will be good. At least you are not alone. It's like two people. It's so much more strong together. That's why we are advising to get married because if you one fall, the other one will lifting it up. Sometimes me and my wife, we are both banging each other so much, both is down, but in the end we are like more up because, oh, we need to be strong. We have Jesus, that is the third part. So we never go so that on, but that was a... <laughs> um, so the point is, the problem is not the leadership of your church or the church you will go. It's what is your attitude, what you want it's your goal. How hungry you are to see the kingdom of God, to have fellowship. Because we need to change our attitude. We need to change our character. We need to change to building our heart like the spirit. Because you will never be the same. Uh, this is like in the opening, I will sharing this thing. Because, and then the more happy thing will come <laughs> later now, but... But this is so important. 
um, to understand because um, because if, if if we are don't understand this thing, we we, we will like uh, getting frustrated everywhere we will come. Um, and I I believe this thing that God, if you're not happy where you are or you feel it over time, yes, there is like. God is calling you for something else, yes, because he will open new doors, but never leave one place, because when God trial you, when he, he, he uh, give you struggles, when he see you need to be humble, maybe you need to be many years in one place only for washing the toilet, but still, he will see your faithfulness. He will build you up. He will prepare in your life, and in that way, when you, will, you, you are ready for do more good things in the future. Like, if your dream is to sitting on a television, to speaking about kingdom of God, he, he, he know, your Father in heaven know to prepare you. Because if you certainly were sitting on the TV, he wants you to be the best part of yourself. Like, you will not be irritated if the light is too strong in your face on the on, online TV, you, you will be like, okay, now I need to c- count to three and then at least not be upset and then you will be in the spirit. You are building the character so you will be the good, best, uh, the best of yourself. It's like, I know this is still a part of the um, spirit care and what is this with the pastor to do? Yes, because normally it's the people who have that shepherd heart. They have the heart and they care normally the extra miles to go. Normally the evangelists, they, they are, they want to, they are a part of it. They, they are, this, they need the same, they want to, they are not, they have the spa- same gift, but sometimes they are burning to win you. So that's why there is a little bit, uh, but I'm not saying that it's only for the pastor or the shepherd of some apostle or a leadership. It's for everyone. Everyone is disciple. So everyone needs to be, to know these things, some of these things. And, yeah. We can uh, open the um, Bible, and then we will see in um, Luke 24. Hallelujah. Jesus horizon is the opening word there. We have just celebrating the Holy Week. We have just celebrating he has rise up. Jesus dead. He have lived together three and a half years. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the best news. And we are, I'm the one on the first <laughs> English Bible school note to tell you this thing. But he's not here. They see that uh, in verse uh, 6, remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must deliver over the hands of sinners. He, be crucified on the third day and be raised again. Then they remember his words. So if you're reading, I think I should read from the beginning here. Uh, it's, um, But... When they come back to the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the others, it was Mary Magdalena, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other with them, who told this to the apostle. But they did not believe the woman, because their words seemed to up them like nonsense. Peter, whoever got up and ran to the tomb, bending over, he saw the stripes of linen lying by himself, and he went away wondering to himself, what happened? (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. Like, they believe Jesus should be the emperor. He should lift in Israel. He should throw out the Roman. He should build a, he should build a new David's kingdom. He should be the, the one who uh, protecting the kingdom. That is what they believe. That is the... And, and um, hello. Yeah, hello. They, he, he suddenly died, best friend. Hallelujah. There is, and then the story we will focus on most now, is then, um, it's written after here, it's in the Luke. And it's so interesting because Luke, 
he is a doctor, he was like one of the, um, Hussein who write the uh, act. So he was, it, this book was written uh, later. So, but if you see in the mark, one of the first one, you will see that still there in Mark 16, <coughs> there is written in, two, in a few words there. Afterward, in 12, 13, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they was walking in the country. These returned and reportedly it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. So, um, the Mark is writing in the beginning. This is one of the first uh, gospel who was written. But Luke, he was more like the doctor. He was more interesting. Some of these books is coming with some more focus on something. And it's interesting that Luke written so much about this road to Emmaus, because we will, we will read this one now. Um, from uh, verse 13. Now, the same day, the two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were, but they were kept from recognizing him. <laughs> Can stop a little bit there. They they was blinded. They was lost. Maybe these two guys was one of the seventy that have like give up. There was only Johannes, one disciple who followed Jesus to the cross. The rest of them were scared. They was starting to fishing again. They doing many things. And these two guys, they also ran away to another cities. This story here is about two people. The lights, the hope, had gone. The eyes was closed. This people was in deep, deep, deep sorrow. When we are sorrow and sad, it makes us to stop to look. It makes us to lose our hope. We, we, it's like we are stopping to be negative. I have not, no hope. There is no reason. To, I don't know how to do. And we're starting to continue talking about it, to put ourselves down. It's a curse. I know it. And <laughs> I'm telling me this thing every day. So important what you're telling yourself. But all the um, uh, surrounding about these two guys and their lives, there is no... I, did, I don't know anything anymore. They just went away because everything was uh, so sad for them. They have a, sad, um, a big wound. They have a big problem. It was so hurtful. That without any help, they were, cannot find the right path back to the life. I believe this story is here. This is in the Bible for a story, not for a reason. So we can learn something from it. From the verse 17, he say, he asked, then he asked them, Jesus. They don't know him. They don't know he was this. It was a strange man. But we know it's Jesus. But he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their, their faces, hello, they stopped there. Don't cast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know, one, know the things that have happened there in these days? Like, how? What thing? He asked. He asked only one question. Of course, he know everything. But, of course, they should, they are like, hello, Special for these guys? This was like, I don't know, it was all the world, all the hope. Think like if you have been in a war with your country in many hundred years and then suddenly we have a hope to be free and then the hope is finished. 
or you lost someone you love so much. But what, what Jesus said, he asked one question, what things? Uh, so I think sometimes we need to think, uh, we need to like believe one thing. That is, we cannot understand it all the time what other people know. And don't t try to think we know what I know. We should not try to be telling them the right thing. We should not try them to t educate them. We should not try to be like, uh, because it's so easy that we will be like standing here and talking a little bit down or, or telling them, hello, this could say hello. Hello, I'm, I'm here. What are you thinking? Are you crazy? Are you not believing? I told you this thing. Like, but these guys, they didn't see. They haven't lost their hope. What he do? He, he, he just like asking, oh, wow, tell me. Tell me what's going on, friends. Uh, I see that you are down. Like, this, this is, uh, I'm still talking about like um, soul caring. Uh, make these people that you're talking to have their own sorrow in their life. Let them own it, their own sadness, like the problem. Don't try to make it smaller or anything. Respect what is the problem. And it's so important if we learn some of these keys because it will really help us to help others. In and respect what is their, um, um, like behoove, like uh, their needs. Uh, in tw uh, we read a little bit more. About Jesus from of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in the word, and deed before God and all these people. They know he, they will be in with him and raise people from dead. And then from 20, the chief priest and our rulers handed him or to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. They are so down. They don't understand anything. And then verse 21, but we have hope that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is, and what is more? It is the third day since all that took place. I can see this fall in front of me. Like, but they're telling, they have hoped that he should be like this. And now he's going three days. He's, yeah. They are really, really crying. They really, really have need to telling the problem to, to this stranger. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb, now come the rumors here, and <laughs> Marites, to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find, no, they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angel who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But they did not see Jesus. <laughs> so he let them express, get out of frustration. They, it's okay. Because they need to own their own problem. And then verse 25. Here there is a little bit changing. Because here you can see that... Um, Sometimes it's not going that fast, but he see that it's time to take them out of the darkness. We need to go to the Bible, maybe telling this little bit of the truth. Not be uh, pride or um, uh, like ask, act like you, you, but doing in a humble, nice way. But find the truth. The truth is in Jesus, right? We need to try to let, okay, look a little bit away from our problem, our view on us, to look at Jesus. And then he, in verse 25, he said to them, <laughs> how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all the prophets 
have spoken. Did not Messias have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Hmm. Because Jesus is know that. He needs to suffering. And we know that too, that to be a Christian, it's everything else, not, it's, <laughs> be, be, be careful what I'm saying. To be a Christian is to take up your cross. To be a Christian is that there will be a lot of trembling. There will be a lot of hard days. Because you have an enemy who will put you down. And you have the, the world who are against you. And, and God is testing you. He's building you. He wants you to, to um, find your own roads to your own path. He wants you to, to be ready to build a character. He wants you to grow up. So it's not like um, we are not a robot. We are not like uh, everyone know that. The life is hard. But still, and he, Jesus knows that he needs to suffering. And this, and this is he telling them. Um, Hmm. We, we can read finish to verse 35. And, and beginning with Moses and all prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as he were, were going farther. And Jesus telling them a lot thing about like, the Old Testament, the prophet, uh, the truth. And they listened. But they urged him, him strongly, stay with us. For it is nearly evening. It's starting to be evening. So the day is almost over. They asked him. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, gave thanks, <laughs> broke it, and began to give it to them. Hallelujah. We are always talking about the communion. It's again here in the Bible. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. So they recognized him because they was used to see him sharing the bread, being with him, but they have not seen. Now their eyes was open. Something happened with the Lord's meal, when we are together, when we're sharing the meal together, friendships together, brothership together. And suddenly, when we just in a humble way teaching the Bible, t teaching Jesus, showing them t Jesus, they will open with our eyes. And then in verse 32, it says, they ask each other, where, where are not our hearts burning within us while we talk with us? on the road, and then open the scripture to us. So they could feel it. The heart was burning. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembling together and saying, It is true. <laughs> the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told them what happened on the way. In Mark, he's just writing two lines about this thing. <laughs> but and how Jesus recognized by them when he broke the bread. Then they recognized him. Hallelujah. Oh, you see this. The, they will open their eyes. They're breaking the bread. They remember Ah, this is how it is with to be with Jesus. This is how to be with Father. I can, the aroma is there again. Open their eyes. <clears throat> and their heart was burning when this word and this teaching was burning. We talk about this four uh, key, the, the four B in Norwegian. But if Jesus was just like, Telling this thing to them from the beginning, I think they will not get open their eyes. Of course, Jesus is Jesus, but he explains us these things. Because 
when we are talking to our friends, when we are, have other people we are disciple, let them own the problem. Let them come to us. Give them time teaching them. Let them see the gospel full of the Holy Spirit when we are, when we are sharing. When we are full of Jesus, it will, they will feel it. Because they need to give their heart to change, to be with Jesus. It's a really, really beautiful story about like spiritual care. And, and to, to look at this Emma's walk, walkers on the road. And, but we are not finished with that one. Um, I will, you, you can open if you want, but you can go to John 4, and then we can talk about the woman with the well. You remember that nice story? Jesus, he, he was a prophet. And it's meaning when we are living with the Father in heaven, he will, like it's saying in Ephesians 2.10, he will making the roads open for us so we can walk in them. And that is, it is for us too, like Jesus. He, he know that. He's just sending the rest of the family, the friends, the disciples and the ladies and all the people who follow him uh, to find some food. He said, ah, I want, I'm tired, I want to sit there. And then he have a like, okay, I know there is something will happen there. And then he talked with this woman in the well. You remember the story. And she is really, really shameful sinner who was many husband. And, the soul, and Jesus prophesied over her, but that is not the big point. The point of this story is that she met this lady, and what we are calling, like in Norwegian, like she have uh, like all her like uh, <laughs> the skin out, like she have all like a hard side out, like the claw out. Don't talk to me. I am uh, not a lady. I call, I'm not. I'm a lady, and I want to be in peace. Don't. And I'm a Samaritan, and you are a Jewish. What are you talking to me? Like, we can experience these things. And, and, and she was so proud, too. Um, <laughs> because she is offending him. And when you see this story here, remember one thing. There is one goal Jesus have. Same for us. Still, if she was like so out with her claw, she was like, he had one focus. It's what is the Father's plan. And to win souls. Because that should always be our plan. We should never go in the conversation with that woman on the well or someone. And, and like, we want to win the discussion. But I think God will lead us. He will make us humble. And because we, there is no point to win a discussion. But only winning soul. Uh, Jesus, uh, he speak in the right time. There's one interesting there, like when I'm jumping a little on my paper, but when Barnabas and Jesus was there, they was take him from the Gethsemane, Jesus, and then they asking him, like, are you, um, how he asked him, like, he, are you the, the king of the Jewish? And then Jesus said, like, the king of all the Jewish. Then um, Pilatus asked him before they crucify him. And then, Jesus looked at him. He knew that no reason to argue with him. He said, you say so. This is your word. Like, he didn't deny, he didn't accept. But in real what he do, he just said, he don't want to be in any discussion. He just like, he know when it's the time to talk or, or let the talk not there. 
Um, and we have another story that I have preached about a few weeks ago, like months ago, that is Lazarus. It's a really nice story about spirit. You'll see the character of Jesus. In John 11, I think you have the verse. It's really, really... Um, I will read it from the Bible. I love John. Uh, in John 11, because it's so nice to get it directly from the Word. Uh, in verse 32, 33 and 35 especially. But, as you remember, they, he, he had best friend in Maria and uh, Magda, and they have called him to, because his best friend, Lazarus, Jesus' best friend, he was so sick, he will die. And he know he died. They buried him. And when Jesus come there, always to, uh, many days too late, he was already in the tomb. And as we know of the story that God had a bigger plan, this was the story, and then he showed all the people there that he raised them from the dead and all these people, he lifting up their feet. But um, what is in written in, in 11.30 is that when Jesus saw Mary, he started weeping. And the Jewish who had come along with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in spirit and trouble. Where have you laid him, Jesus? And then come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. It's really interesting, this, because Jesus already know that he will wake him up. He already know that this is the God, Father told him. This is why he is here. But you know what? I have like one day I was like, I see one thing in the Bible. That is, if you want to really live close in God's promise in our life, we need to have the nature of God in our life. When we have the compassion for other people, when we are really care about them, should they should, there's, there are problems. We are available to go in there and do miracles in their life. But if we think that we should just doing things for uh, entertainment, like we <laughs> saw, <laughs> nothing will happen. But you need to have the heart that you see Jesus, he was really vaping. He, why he should do that? Hello, if I know that uh, I, the most funny thing I'm doing in my life sometimes, it's not funny, but if I know that uh, my football team will win this match and then I go home, I, I already win, know that I have won the match and then I go home and I see the match. And then, oh, now they are underscore. They will lose. Normally I will sit there and be so scared I will maybe cry because they need to win this match. And then the end, I will be so happy they win. But if I already know they will win, <laughs> I will think, okay. But Jesus, he cares. <laughs> I know it was a maybe funny illustration, but he cares. But like we know that everyone will be saved. There is a bigger plan, God's kingdom. We, we know that. And, and maybe we know people sitting and crying in our arms, but, and we know it some, after some time it will go over. But God wants us to have that compassion. Like, have that love. Because that is how God is. Amen. You remember the story about uh, <laughs> Peter and Jesus. Um, in Luke 22, it's like, already, normally, when I'm... <laughs> Um, Luke 22, it's, um, we will not read all this thing. But we read that, remember the story about after that um, they have a celebrating communion and then uh, and, uh, the Peter, 
he denied, and he was so afraid, he denied three times Jesus. And in that, when we read it before in Luke 24, in the beginning there, he say, the Peter who ran into the tomb, he was the loved one. Peter was really his loved one. Peter was the, um, he was so eager. He was so, uh, he want all. He gave his life. He was his best friend. He was so tough. He want to be ahead of Jesus. He loved Jesus so much. There's a reason that he was like called like to, to be the stone. He will be the, the, the church will build on him because he was the leader of the apostle. He was the one who taking care of this um, group of apostles. And um, we read it many times. But I think this is, what is the church? The church is us. The church is the people. And Jesus talk about like Peter is the church. And here we see that nobody else was more faithful than Peter. But he was also unfaithful. Still. And then we remember that when, when he, uh, <laughs> Jesus come with the boat, and then Jesus, like, in the second time, like, oh, throw the fishing knot on the other side. And then he waiting in the, on them to eating food with them, to have a breakfast to them. They have already given up. <laughs> Starting their new life. They were so ashamed. They have what they should do without Jesus. Jesus was their life. I think many Christian people like that. We are, he is our life. He is our hope. He is every reason. For we wake up and we are preaching. We are, pre we are living to see the kingdom of God. The, we were plundering the hell and win the people for heaven. That is our mission. And we are living for Jesus. We love Jesus. But here Jesus was dead. They give up. They should know better. Then Jesus uh, want to talk to Peter. You know this story here. I can read it. I, it's, it's a pastor heart. You need to read it. From verse 14. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to the Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? I can think he's so low. He's so down. Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, the son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. And the third time he said to him, Simon, son of God, do you love me? Peter was so hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Three times he asked him, his best friend, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things in my life. You know all my character, how I am, what I have done. You know I have given my life for you. I follow you. You are my everything. That is what people say to him. And then Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch your hands and somebody else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He, he said this to, um, about his uh, Peter's dad. But the point is, and then he said to him again, like, follow me. <laughs> He's getting get him, him three mission. That like to feed the lambs, the newborn, the new disciple, protecting them, take care of my sheep. Is the next way. Take care of my sheep, protecting them. Nobody will harm them. And feed my sheep, it means they are not lambs anymore. They are mature. But you should still educate them and feed them. You should still uh, because uh, food them with the word of God. 
That is what Peter. And this is Peter. I have like um, listened to some um, preacher, and they give me a really nice like the Father in heaven. You know, he, he Jesus was his firstborn. He is the one who walk. He was sitting three hours alone in the. He left him. He took our uh, sin. He was the Lamb who bare all the world's sin. He had the right first right, Jesus. He is the get all perfect. He get, he opened the throne room, so so we have access. But because the Father blessed Jesus with His left hand, and then He blessed the church with the right hand. And we get the point, the same like Jacob blessed his grandchildren, Manasseh and Ephraim. It's like a picture, I like the picture, but he, they get the same. We are getting the same like Jesus because we are one with him. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and, and it's so nice that we have the right. And, and this is what we want to share to all our friends and all the church. Because we are the church. We are a part of Jesus. We are the new born again. We are the child of God. We have all the promises. We have all that Jesus has done. Have we forget? Together with him, we get blessed together. We are his bride. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What Peter was, he was faithful, but he was unfaithful. But still he get blessed. But that is us. Sometimes we are so faithful, but we fail. And then we are unfaithful. But we have the right heart. We're building the character. We never give up. Again, we are like, Father, forgive us. Help us. We have struggling, but we are moving on. This is Peter. This is the church. This is how the church is. Hallelujah. I have one, um, we have one favorite uh, guy too. He, uh, in Colossian, he, I have uh, make a special for him. His name is Epa, I'm sure, in, in verse, um, Colossian 1, 7. You learn the Paulus and Timotheus is writing here and telling about one guy who had Epaphras. And this writing here, you learn it from Epaphras. They're writing this letter to the uh, church in Colossian. Our dear fellow servant, who is faithful, mind this of Christ on our behalf. What is written here? Fellow servant, and he is faithful, mind sir. Like, they are not telling about this Ephaphras, that he was a powerful preacher, that he doing miracles, that he building the church, he was rich, he was handsome. <laughs> no. What is the point? This is the character that we are teaching, what we are looking for that will be a part of the church, the disciples, when we are teaching. It's about faithfulness, to be a servant. And we know that he was probably one of the 70 who was with Jesus, and it's just written with small notes. And, and if you're looking in the other books like that and writing in the, um, the background, he was getting a bishop for... All of this big church in Colossus later, I think it's Colossus, they have heaven. But be, not because he was the talented, gifted guy, but he was faithful servant. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is what we are looking at. Um, Um, 
the biggest, uh, biggest wrong one pastor can do is to not look at faithful people. There are enough of talentful people coming and going. But faithfulness is uh, something you are. You can just not be acting something else, but all the talent, all the gift, it's if you are talented. Look at in, um, here in, um, with faithful, in, in, in the Numbers 12, there's a small story there we know about Moses. He, it's about Miriam, especially about Miriam here. She was really like uh, <laughs> um, complaining. And we can read from there, one, verse 1. Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Kushit wife, for he had married the Kushit. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? They asked. Hasn't he always spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. The Lord hear what they are talking about. And then verse 3. <laughs> no, Moses was a very humble man. More humble than anyone else on the face on the earth, it written. At once, <laughs> interesting. At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, Come out to the tent, to the meeting, all three of you. So the three of them went out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud. They stood at entrance to the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them stepped forward, he said, Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, Reveal myself to them in vision. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my houses. Moses, he was his best friend. He was his friend. So he talked to him when he want. Always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is this telling us? Our Father in heaven, He wants us to be our friends. He wants to see that we are faithful. That we are like, it's not like, ah, ah, today I don't want to go into church, but because it's boring, he is, I don't like the guy who's preaching, or the worship team today is not so funny. But, to, but next time I come, because they, I know they will celebrate and have cake, and, and a lot of nice food. God, or, or I want to be a preacher, but I don't want to do anything else than preach. He needs some people to be helping in all the other things. Because if you want to come into that calling, maybe you need that time to grow, to preparing yourself. Remember the disciple, they should, he asked them nicely when he was praying the last night they come and took Jesus. Please, stay. Be faithful. Be awake. But they sleep, everyone. Only Johannes went, was the one who would stay with him in the Calvary. Jesus loves us. For as we should love. He show us the way. He is the perfect picture of the Father. When we read the Bible, I remember the first thing I learned when a new Christian, Frank, they told me, read the Bible, whatever you're doing, just study all what Jesus is doing and be like him. Then you will be a perfect Christian, like you will success, you will, Father will love you. This is how to be a Christian. Just find out all the things Jesus is doing in a good way. Because he is the perfect picture of the Father. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have experienced the, our Father like God. Maybe it's not there. You remember then. 
Uh, like Jesus, remember, when he was in a few hours on the cross, but when Jesus was born, there was one man who was not his father, but stepfather, Joseph. I think he was so, he knew he had a visitor from angel, he knew this guy, Jesus, his son, was not really was a special son. He was know that he was the Lord, his, uh, the, the, the God of the heavens' own son. He knew that he had a special purpose. He was there with Joseph, with Jesus, helping him, educate him, teaching him, protecting him. He was example to be a father. And then there was a new Moses, Joseph, who helped Jesus in the last hours to carry the cross. Sometimes I think we are the one, Joseph, in somebody else's life. And sometimes we have an angel coming. Jesus will come and walk with us. We don't understand. Sometimes, if you are a, still if you are a pastor or a priest, it's like somebody will just come, you don't know where, and they will open the Bible for you. Because we don't know. Maybe they he walk with us. We should be like Joseph. We should carry our cross. Bring out the gospel. And when people are in darkness, when you meet people that you have spiritual care, you sit down. The one hardest thing, especially if you were some really, really love this person, especially, um, that is to bear over. To um, I have a good Norwegian word, but. You need to accepting. You need to have um, uh, time and bear over with these people about the darkness they are inside. You ne need to let them stay in their own darkness. <laughs> But you need to let them find the light yourself. You cannot force them out of the darkness. You need to come with the lights, read them out. When they open their eyes, they will be like free <laughs> to dance. It's like I believe so many people like about a story about the seaman. They have the seed on the road, on the, uh, in the stained stone and, and the thistles. Most of them have problem to be in, in the good soil. And that is because they need, when they come in the good soils, it's because they open their own eyes and when they eat more, so with the grace they will grow. Because if they are worried about everything else that happened in the world, then we need to let, to accepting sometimes, and then let them find. Like if you're sitting with somebody who maybe is full of cancer, they will die. You, don't, you cannot tell them that it's hollow. It's so nice that you are dying when Jesus crucified. Or this is a perfect timing. Like uh, Jesus loves you. They will maybe knock you. You need to help them to find the lights. You need to accept them. They are sad. When we are like that, they will get the trust to us. And, and we can reach to people. But of course, like I'm telling you, a lot of things at the beginning too about to be easy, uh, disappointed of many things going on and then you are doing many mistakes leaving church and like that this is not that is a different things but when it comes to spiritual care it's our job is to give them the lights 
and showing them Jesus, the truth. But let them, we need to have, let them talk. Because if they will feel that we are not, take them respectful or love them or care for them, they will not open their eyes or their heart. That is what I believe. Uh, we can talk a lot about these things, about spiritual care, um, different kind of church doing things different. I believe that to discipleship all of uh, the church, the church is me and you. Uh, because when you are a disciple, you will learn to make new disciples. You should bear fruit. So this is a part. Um, but you have a pastor. You have a leadership. You have a house group leader so that have walked more. So of course, sometimes when life is hard, you lose something, you are sick, it's good to have someone there to can bear over, to stay with you respect you, love you, like open your eyes like the emmaus that walk on the road. Jesus, let them talk. And then he just opened the truth for them when they was finished. Amen. That is what I have in my heart today. I, could sh I was planning to share a lot more about like teamwork, to building to do focus on the church, but because I really believe on this faithfulness. I believe on um, that God wants to build our character. He wants us to not only be called, but he wants us to be chosen, sent out. And to be, like, to, to be that, we need to um, understand the key and let he anoint us. And when we are doing this thing, then I, that is one of the most important key. That is because the pastor, he will see always uh, finding people who is called to people who is tell, can help in the church to build the church because we are a part of the body of Christ. But number one is faithfulness. That's why I to, to, to take the next step. And when you are a part of something smaller or you are take a, um, if you are in a worship team, be faithful, do your best, lift on, be a servant. And then if you are not there, they will miss you. And, and, and like and then, then you have the life with the Christ. You have a life in the church. The problem is if you come here, you don't want to be a part, and then you just leave. You are not a part of a cell group. You are not a part of the, um, the one who fixing or cleaning or singing or whatever happened in the church. Or the, they need help with, with uh, taking care of the child. I, no, 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 I am a singer. I, or I have two nice clothes on me. I cannot play with the kids. God wants us to prepare us. And then when we are ready, he will lift us up. Because every, the, the calling is the base that he will prepare us. And, and you will feel that, um, like you will find, suddenly God opened the door and say, now it's time. Or maybe he will send you as a missionary. But I... But what he called you, it will always happen. He will never let he will never take it away. The calling is there. We need to be faithful. We need to be standing firm on the word, on the teaching, on the body, to something else is showing up as in our life. Thank you. I will just thank you, Heavenly Father. I will thank you for this Bible school. I will thank you for all the students who listen. I'm praying for them. I'm praying for that you will have a, um, learning a lot, that you will be, see the uh, new um, 
new things that the Lord will open in your life. Uh, it will help you in your walk as to grow up uh, in the life, to uh, learn to read the Bible, to understand the Bible, to knowing to learn more of Jesus, to see more of Him, to, to let Him take more of your, your life, your uh, uh, identity, let Him, he, His nature, let the Father's nature be your nature. So He can use you and we can walk in the power and see heaven be filled up. I'm praying for that. And I'm praying that the, we will see everyone, soul that is hurt and that is, have a problem. Because the sick is the one who needs us. The, the, it's not the um, people who is do, uh, healthy, they're not the, red, the, fair, the justified people who need help. But it's the, the people who is poor, the people who is sick. And we are there for going out, reach out with the gospel and do the mission. In Jesus' name, amen. And have a really nice day and see you next week. <laughs>